Okay guys, uh, today I'm going to start talking about multiplying and dividing fractions by 2. Uh, the reason why we're doing dividing by 2 or multiplying by 2 is because that's the most common thing that we're going to do in our shop setting. Uh, so I try to tailor everything to things that are going to be practical that we're going to use in our shop. So this is what we're going to be doing. So first let's start by multiplying some fractions by 2. So let's start off with 3 sixteenths times 2. Now there's some shortcuts here and that's the way I'm going to teach you because when we go into the shop you want to be able to do these things very quickly. You have a measurement, you got to use a machine, somebody's waiting in line behind you, you need to be able to do this stuff very quickly uh, in your head. So if we have 3 sixteenths times 2, what we're going to do is we're just going to take that bottom number and cut it in half. Okay, so when we multiply fractions by two, we divide the bottom number by two. So it's kind of the opposite. So we take our bottom number, we're going to cross this out and put a divided sign there. So then we divide that 16 by two and we end up with three eighths. And remember the rule from adding and subtracting fractions is that if we have an odd number on top and an even number on bottom, that means we're done. And that rule only applies when we're talking about measurements. It doesn't apply uh, to every single situation, uh, but when we're talking about measurements, that's how you know if it's reduced, okay? Let's do another one. Uh, this time we're gonna try one with a whole number. So let's do two and five eighths times two. Same process, except for now we have two different math problems in one. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the whole number and multiply it by two, and then we're gonna take the fraction and multiply that by two. So we go two times two gives us four. So now we're done with the two. So now we're gonna do that five eighths times two, just like we did with that last problem. So we're gonna divide our bottom number by two. So we're gonna cross this out and divide the bottom by two. So the top stays the same. So we're gonna end up with a five. And the bottom number, eight divided by two gives us four. Okay? So this is, this is our two, two numbers here that we multiplied by two. Now we have an improper fraction. So we have to use what we used in the last section to figure out how to do this. So I'm gonna do, do a quick review on that. So when we have an improper fraction, we gotta take the bottom number, see how many times it goes into the top number. So four goes into five one time. So that's our whole number. And we have one left over. So that remainder is our top number and our bottom number stays the same. Okay, so now we are done with that part. We have to mush these two together. So we have our four from our whole number, and we have one and one fourth from our fraction. So we have to get those together, so we're gonna add them. So since we have whole numbers, we just add the whole numbers together. So four plus one gives us five, and then we don't have a fraction to add to our fraction, so our fraction gets, just gets drug along like this. Okay, let's do another one with the whole number. Uh, so we got uh, five and three eighths, okay, uh, times two. So again, we have two math problems here. So we have our whole number times two and our fraction times two. We wanna separate it like that. So we're gonna say five times two gives us 10. And we're done with our five. And now we're doing our fraction so we're actually dividing the bottom number by two. So eight divided by two gives us four, and then our three stays the same. Now we have a proper fraction, odd number on top, even number on bottom, which means it's also simplified. So 10 and 3 fourths is our answer. All right, so now let's do some dividing by two. So we're gonna do uh, just a fraction divided by two first. So let's start with 
are three sixteenths. All right, now when we were multiplying, it, it turned our multiplying symbol into a division symbol for the bottom number. We're gonna do the opposite now. We have a division sign. We're gonna cross that out. And now we're gonna multiply that bottom number by two. So multiplication is the opposite of division. So we always flip that for our bottom number only. So our top number stays the same as a three. And now we do 16 times two and we get 3 30 seconds. Okay, again, odd number on top, even number on bottom. So that tells us it's simplified and our answer is finished. All right, now let's try one with a mixed number. So we're gonna do two and five eighths divided by two. Again, we have two math problems. We have our whole number divided by two and our fraction divided by two. We wanna separate those. So two divided by two, or two goes into two one time. So our whole number is now one. We're done with that part. Second math problem, just like we did in the last uh, example, we're gonna cross that out and switch it to multiplication for the bottom only. So the top stays the same as a five. Eight times two is 16. So 16 is our new bottom number which is even, and our five is odd, so we are finished here. I'm gonna try one more. Uh, this version makes it a little bit trickier. This is the hardest problem you'll have with dividing fractions by two. And that's when we have a mixed number where the whole number is odd. So let's try five and three eighths. Divided by two. All right, so now we have two math problems. We have the mixed number. Uh, so we have a, a whole number divided by two and a fraction divided by two. This time when we have an odd number, I'm gonna do this fraction first, okay? So I'm gonna change this to a multiply by two. So we got three over eight times two is 16. So three sixteenths is our fraction. Now we're gonna go five divided by two. Okay, so five divided by two is not an even number. We end up with another mixed number. So five divided by two is two and a half. Okay, now we have to add our fractions together, but we don't have a common denominator. So we have to get a common denominator, okay? So I'm gonna show you the long way first and then I'll show you the shortcut. So finding a common denominator, we did this when we were adding and subtracting fractions, it's the same process. We have two fractions we have to add together. So what do we do to this two? We're gonna multiply something by this two to make it a 16. Or we can say two goes into 16 eight times. So we're gonna multiply it by eight and do the same thing to the top. So we get two, and eight times one is eight. Two times eight is 16. Okay, so now we can add our fractions. So we end up with two is our whole number and 11 sixteenths, because we just add our tops. Eight plus three is 11, 16 stays the same. We have an odd number on top and an even number on bottom and that tells us we are done. Okay, now for the shortcut version. I'm gonna still start the same way. I'm gonna do my fraction first. So I do times two instead of divided by two. So I have three sixteenths. Now I do my whole number, five divided by two gives me two and a half. Okay, so I'm gonna just put that whole number there. Now if I have a half, and I have my fraction over here, I wanna know how many sixteenths are in a half, okay? So let me give you an example. So if I have one half, this equals the same as two fourths. I changed my bottom number, so I unsimplified a half 
with a four as the bottom number. I'm gonna unsimplify it again with an eight as the bottom number. Four eighths equals one half. I'm gonna unsimplify it again with a 16 on bottom, and I end up with eight sixteenths. Now, if you can memorize this or write this down somewhere, this is gonna make it a lot faster for you when you're doing these assignments. So one half equals two fourths, four eighths, and eight sixteenths. So now that I know that, rather than going through the finding a common denominator and switching that up, I can just say, okay, it's a half. I have a 16 here. So 8 sixteenths plus 3 sixteenths gives me 2 and 11 sixteenths. And that's my final answer. I just added those back across. So the, the, the shortcut is automatically switching that after you know what your denominator is on your fraction. Okay, guys, after you've done, uh, listen to this lesson, uh, make sure you do the assignment on multiplying and dividing fractions by two. When you type in the Google form for your answers, make sure that one, they are simplified, and two, they are in the proper format. Same format as when we did the other Google forms, but just to reiterate, you're gonna type in the whole number, you're gonna put a dash, then you're gonna type in the numerator, type a slash, and then type in the denominator. So it'll be all in one line like that, and that dash is very important. Uh, if you do not type it in this way, it will automatically mark it wrong, and you'll have to go back in and retake the whole assignment, okay? So make sure you are using the correct format. Make sure that your fractions are always simplified. And if you have any questions, you can email me, or I will see you on Wednesday's Google Meet.